Welcome to my personal debt-free journey. In this video, we're going to go over my own personal numbers. We're gonna look at the entire case study. This is gonna be a series where I literally document my journey going into debt, essentially being debt-free for multiple years, going into debt, explaining why, and then revealing all of my financial strategies, mindset, everything that I'm doing to then get back out of debt, back into a debt. And I'll just explain my reasons why. And you get to comment below, you get to have a discussion, you can reach out to me directly about your personal financial freedom journey, your debt freedom journey, right? And we get to have a dialogue. Maybe we might disagree on something that I'm doing to get out of debt. Maybe there's some things you're like, oh wow, I didn't think of that. I'm gonna go ahead and implement that and that's gonna help me save thousands of dollars interest and put you in a better overall financial position to make better move with your money. So with that being said, Let's dive right into the numbers. Taking you over to the left-hand side, we are in February of 2024. I'm recording this video on March 20th of 2024. So I'm giving you a analysis of my numbers, February, and then here are my numbers from January 1st all the way to March 2nd. So I've brought in, this is just looking at one bank account where I have majority of my go to. There's very few other places where I have income go to, but that those numbers are almost irrelevant. Talking maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars or so, nothing too crazy. So this is just me analyzing one business account where I have majority of my income go to. So from January to March 22, had uh, $70,027. And when I look at expense, numbers, money going out, we had $69,034.20 go out. Now, to not scare you, of that 69 grand, a good 20 plus thousand or so is actual cash flow. Now that cash flow is what's being used to pay down, right, which is now at $380,000. We started at $566,000 December 21st, 2023. Went ahead and bought a primary residence. I have now a home. And instead of your traditional mortgage, I have what's called a first position home equity line of credit where the credit limit starts out based on the financing amount, which was $566,000. I have an intro rate of 4.99% for six months. So that expires in June this year. And I have the ability to drive a majority of my income to this line of credit. I'm able to spend all, I'm able to run all my expenses out of the line of credit, hence this is helping me re dramatically reduce the amount of interest that I'll pay on the life of this particular debt. My goal is to have this paid off by December of 2026. So we're looking at about a three year time starting from December 2023 all the way to December 2026. If I get done sooner, great. If it takes a little bit longer, no big deal because my particular world, by the time I get to 2026, there might be, you know, under 50,000 owed, but understand the value of the property would have increased. I have a credit line of 566,000 to use however be necessary, right? So from December, 2021 to now March 24, on the 22nd, a lot of twos, I now owe $380,477.33. There's over 180,000 of available credit however I want. Four major numbers for February, 32 came in, 35 came out. So for that month, tech was a negative, right? But again, of this 35, there's roughly 10,000 plus of like net cash flow that occurred. But because I'm stripping it out of the business account, it looks like a negative business, right? Again, total numbers, Here's how much is coming out of the business. And again, it's being sent in personal, first lien home equity line of credit, just so we have that understanding. But I'm still showing like what's going on uh, from account to account, right? So that we don't get lost. We've got some upcoming expenses, okay? I have a tax bill for $46,059 that is due on April 15th. This covers all my taxes for 2023 and the first estimated payment for 2024. So that's why that number looks a little bit large. In the first video of this series is titled First Lean HELOC Cost and Strategy Breakdown, right? So I'm gonna create a little playlist where I start documenting and putting all these videos together so you can watch them in order. From numbers to numbers, what switches, what happens, what gets better, what gets worse, that sort of thing. In that video, I did not account for taxes. So these numbers are gonna look a little bit worse than what I initially projected, but not too bad overall, despite many other things occurring that we're gonna talk about. So that's the first thing is the tax bill, April. Also, I have 
one policy that I'll max funding on April 14th for $17,853.21. Of this amount is also a loan interest included in there that I'll be paying. So again, this money is going to be coming out of the line of credit. All my income comes from business. There's business expenses, cash flow, and income that I pay myself from the business is being driven into this first lien HELOC. The same is being said for my mom, my fiance. So we have three incomes that we're using in my household to accelerate a balance owed on this first. Lock. This is where we're actually parking our savings dollars. We're parking our investment dollars. We're parking cash flow dollars. We're parking as much money as we can in the first lien HELOC and simultaneously that gives us instant equity. Immediately able to use that money again twice, right, to go and do another thing. The next thing coming up in June is another policy that I'm funding. So that amount is 84,551.19. That's max funding the policy plus paying loan. In. What I did to initially acquire the property, because in my first video, I mentioned that the purchase price was $630,000, right? Plus closing costs. I borrowed from my policies, right? Specifically this one to fund the down payment, which was 10.1%. And then there's closing costs on top of that. So that's what was used. I borrowed from saving, had nearly 400, almost 500,000 in savings across different accounts. So majority of it from this policy right here. And I, boom, borrowed, boom, acquired the home. Now have the debt, now paying down the debt extremely fast, paying as little interest as humanly possible. Balance this money, right? Or I should say this, right? This 630,000 purchase price on a property, real estate, this money has to get spent. Uh, this, this is now in my economy. I already know this, this money is going to leave my economy to go to the bank. But before that happens, utilizing my own banking system to fund that, right? the down payment and then the acceleration. Then over time with my income, my, my production, my activity income, cash flow goes into the line of credit. Then simultaneously while it's paying it down, I'm then drawing out of that line of credit to continue to fund my own bank, my own bank, right? And then money gets borrowed out again, pay down that line, money comes out again to fund my own bank. And what's going to happen is this 566 eventually is all going to be in the policy. So this will get paid off in roughly three years. And then that whole debt will be sitting in the policy, right? And then I'll spend the next couple of years driving my income and cash flow to my own bank. Meanwhile, I'll have a 560 plus thousand dollar credit line that I can leverage to say, go acquire more real estate, invest in my business to produce more income, more cash flow increase the velocity of money, the speed at which money moves in the direction that it moves in, right? So I've got to explain that to you in detail. So June, boom. Then we have another estimated tax payment of $10,000. Those are the upcoming expenses that we know of. Now, something that I realized being a homeowner is there are unexpected expenses that are going to pop up. Now, in my mind, I low-key accounted for it. The number was more than I thought. So I had about seven to $10,000 of unexpected expenses, right? And I kind of named some of the things here, home insulation, AC work. I got cited from the city, say, hey, you know, you got to plant some shrubs and mulch and you got to put a tree here. And I'm like, dude, I just moved in, right? So I'm like, all right, got to do some roof work, some pressure washing, a couple different stuff going on. So I was like, okay, these are interesting feelings that I'm feeling and I uh, don't know if I like it. So there's a lot of confusion on the internet, right? There's a whole community that exists that will tell you never use debt, avoid debt like the plague. There's another big community that says, leverage debt, use debt to create wealth, use debt to accelerate wealth, to create more cash flow and income, to reduce on taxes, to have more protection overall. And then in this community, in the finance geek community, we pull from both worlds to see what works best for us. So that's kind of been my personal strategy. 2018, starting this YouTube video all the way up to now, 2024. I pull from both worlds. Now from this world, avoiding debt as much as possible, I don't particularly avoid debt. I welcome it into my economy. I've mastered debt. I know how to use debt to my advantage. So those are things that have benefited me. One thing that I'm discovering being in this kind of debt as a 28 year old young man, the most amount of debt I've ever been in was as high as 30 to 35,000, 28. So now being in 560, 
6,000 of debt created some feelings, some unanticipated feelings wasn't expecting. No matter how many books I read, no matter how many content creators I collaborate with, all the people that I respect in the space that will tell you to never pay off your mortgage or or, or let that just sit and that's the difference, right? In another location and create arbitrage and all these different things. Yes, 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 they're all great. But those feelings, man, those emotions are hard to ignore. So what I, what I pull from the, the debt-free community, the community that says never use debt, I pull from the psychological aspect of it. Where it's like, yeah, you know what? I know that I'm a producer. I know I can go and generate more and more cash flow. I know I can invest and probably get a higher rate of return than what I'm paying in interest on my property, even though I you know, deduct that interest on my taxes. And I do all these, tell you, there's a feeling. The feeling is I just don't like debt. It's about as simple as that. There's no mathematical equation to convince me to to, to carry this debt any longer than I. So for me personally, I get these feelings that I just don't like debt. Now, those feelings could potentially bleed into my ability to produce, my ability to perform, my ability to see clearly, my ability to, to receive God's word over my life. So I don't want to contaminate my ability, my, my connection to my father in heaven, number one. I don't want to sever that connection in a way. I also don't want to create any new money block. So that's why I'm just deciding to attack this, even though I know I can probably make a ton of money if I were to just redirect that cash flow elsewhere and just pay the interest property for the next. Because with the first lien HELOC, it's interest. I'm only required to pay the interest on this property for the next. You could make arguments and strategies like, you know, the, the, the property appreciating at X amount and the deductions that you get on the interest. You make more income to, you know, reduce your tax liability and you can do all these different moves. Yes, yes, yes. Hard to get rid of that feeling. So. I am becoming aware of myself, despite what the gurus say, even people like me, putting myself on the spot, even what I say, and I'm choosing to do this and take the next three years and build my base, fortify my environment, and then proceed with the different investments along the way. So I had to spend a little time there because I know some are feeling that. So comment below if that's you. You're like, kind of, uh, uh, what do I do? Listen to Dave, listen to Grant. I don't know. What do we do? That's why you have Cousin D in the middle. You got Grandpa Dave, you got Uncle G, and you got Cousin D, right? To help you out to make these decisions. Here is the projection, the new projection now. In the first video, the projection was 375000 or less would be the goal to have owed on the first position HELOC by the end of December 2024. The new projection is anywhere around 389000 So we're about $14,000 short. Again, that that was unexpected, you know, tax. I, I knew I had tax, but the number was a little bit higher than I thought. And the unexpected expense copy. So that about, you know, does it right there. So we know where that shortage is coming. We can clearly see that. What I did here, super conservative, I think I think I'll end up doing better. All I did was reduce anywhere from like 13 to 10,000. And I really just did 10,000 all these months. The first month I reduced it by like 13,000. So really the cash flow per month will be about anywhere from as low as 10 to as high as 13,000 in net cash flow. But again, as I'm doing velocity banking, what's actually happening is there's about 20,000 or more that's actually sitting in the first lien HELOC. Expenses are coming out slowly, so the interest cost is what's gonna make the, the difference, right? So I'm, I'm assuming already kind of calculating interest in here and then just reducing the net number by principal net number going down by time. So by April, I should be around 431 because we borrowed the out, we took out of the HELOC to pay taxes and pay the policy. So it drove the number up and then income went in, Cash flow uh, expenses came out, cash flow stayed. Net number should be around 431. May 421. Then June jumps up, goes up because why? Well, we're paying policy, the 84K. Once that happens, that 84 goes into my policy. Then I'm going to borrow $46,200 out. You'll hear me say that in the first video. $46,000 uh, loan, policy loan comes out, brings the balance back down. Then another net 10K new cash flow for the month of June. So the balance would be anywhere around 459 to 449 because in June is also the estimated tax payment. So it might net around here or somewhere around here. We'll see. My goal is to create a video each and every month, typically around the end of the month. 
to show the result of the previous month. So in April, I'm going to show March's actual number. In May, I'm going to show April. So that's how we're going to do this. So come July, it should be around 439. August, 429. September, October. September will be another tax payment. That'll come out. October, November, boom. We should be around 389, right, or less by December. Of Here's my mindset as I process this. For me to continue to produce more, be more effective, be more abundant is I'm just going to continue to serve more people. I'm going to continue to think big, right? Is there a possibility that I generate enough income to wipe out property in 2024? That's very possible, but only if I think big and only if I choose to serve more people and only if I choose to help people get what they want first before I get what I want. Give first before I receive. Next thing, completely detach yourself from money. I am detached from money. It's easy to say that when you're debt free. I will honestly say that. So from 2019 to 2023, I've basically been rocking at debt. Right? And when I say basically, like I run a lot of stuff through credit cards, so I'm always running. I always have a running balance on credit cards, but I'm never paying any interest. I'm always paying off the balance in full. So yes, I'm going into debt, but then I'm paying it off. So I've essentially been debt free from 2019 all the way through into 2023. And so it was very, I, I'm not gonna lie, it's easy to be detached from money when you don't have obligation, don't have all these, all this worry, fear, uncertainty, doubt, that sort of thing. Also, I am in the kingdom of God. I am a representative of my father in heaven. So I have this spiritual protection from my father in heaven, from my creator. So that's another detachment from money. Then the logical part is I know a lot about money at this young age that I am now, 20 years old. So I'm very blessed to have the wisdom and knowledge to have mastery and control over money, right? So all of those aspects help me confidently say I'm detached from money. Now that I'm in debt again at a number that I've never been at before, I'm now in uncharted territory. So I'm saying, I'm affirming, yes, I'm detached from money, but I'm also going through the feeling like, oh, why did I snap back that conversation with that person? Oh, why am I you know, responding this way? Oh, why am I thinking small? Just kind of processing and understanding that, hey, this is part of life. This is gonna happen. So reminding myself, hey, be detached from money. Do not rely on money. Rely on my Father in heaven. Think big. Serve more people. And lastly, this is a big, big thing that I picked up recently from Garrett Gunn. Did a video recently talking with another gentleman. Garrett was talking about, you know, expense is not a bad word. Expense is not a bad word. Expenses. This was actually a breakthrough for me recently. Being someone that's been in the finance space for so many years, oftentimes I, I lean more towards not having a budget. I, I don't have a budget person. I just simply know where my money goes. I know what my expenses are. When I work with clients, some clients have budgets, some don't. So I always meet my clients where they're at. But when it comes to the word expenses, both my clients and myself usually have a negative view over. In my mind, I'm either always figuring out how, to, how can I reduce, optimize my expenses. But the feelings are usually not you know, so positive. Whereas Garrett helped me realize, he, he said, what, what good is money without expense? That was the first point he made. Second point he made was the only thing you can do with money is spend it. Whether that's save, tithe, the only thing that you can do with money is spend it. So it's an expense. If we can change our behavior around expense, his point being that if, if we would just figure out how can we show up more abundantly in the market, how can we be more effective? How can we be more confident and have more authority over our skills, gifts, and talents into the marketplace? Your expenses are gonna be less of a worry and you're not going to be wasting your time, energy, and focus on how to scrap, remove, reduce. Because when you, when you put on that mentality, you're also reducing your performance, confidence, authority, mastery, skills, talent, like time that you could have spent driven there, you were worried about, oh, my expenses are going. Me getting into this new home, my expenses went up. I now have bills that are more expensive because I'm now in a home rather than rent. So if I, if I make the error or mistake or inefficient move to spend too much time on my expenses, my ability to create, to be creative, to be abundant, be a giver, to be confident, to have authority, is going to reduce because I'm no longer. So that was a huge breakthrough. So shout out to Garrett for that. That was a very, very powerful video. And again, this is just my mindset going into 2024. Now being a man in debt with new responsibility in place, 
with expenses that are now higher on average every month and are low key kind of going up. I have to think, okay, Lord, how do I show up in the marketplace more efficient? Okay, Father, what skills, gifts, and talents can I use to show up more abundantly and receive more abundant, more wealth, and then steward that wealth accordingly by accelerating this debt? to remove those emotions that I just simply don't like. I simply just don't like debt. I don't like debt from the perspective of me owning it, right? From the perspective of me paying this interest. I like debt in terms of what it can do. Debt allowed me to get into this property. Debt allowed me to leverage my credit to create more cash flow great more abundant that allows me to be creative right so there's again there's it's a it's a double-edged sword if not used properly debt could be my enemy if used properly debt can be my ally debt could be the reason why certain things go a certain way so I'm not just going to uh, lean on one camp where I just never use debt ever again I'm also not gonna lean on the other side where I'm always leveraging debt. I personally like not having any personal debt on the business side. If I want to leverage and velocitize and do different, even on the personal side, when it comes to like my credit cards and points, cashback rewards and miles and things like that. But the faster I can eliminate any obligation when it comes to cars, houses, even debt loans, I've never done loan business, but if I were the faster I can remove it, the better. Okay. So that's just me personally. If I'm going to invest in something, I rather just have the capital to invest, create the ROI, the cash flow from. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. Again, this is a series. I encourage you to watch the playlist. Probably going to title it my personal debt-free journey. That's probably what I'm going to title it. So it's easy to find. And again, we're going to go month by month, create a video every single month showing you my progress. Those of you that want to get on this journey with, we can actually help each other. I'm a financial consultant. I'm a coach. I'm a strategist, insurance agent. I'm able to help you also get out of debt. We can work together on a financial accountability partnership relationship that we can form as a coach, as a consultant, as a counselor, spiritual guide, right? In the finance industry, in the finance world, in your financial economy. So the, the money that you would help me with, that you would hire me to work with you, helps you get out of debt, save tons of money on interest, help you increase your cash flow. I'm sharing with you where the money's going. I'm being a great steward with it. I'm cash flow positive. I'm, I'm using my money effectively, being a great example in my household leader showing up in a different way. My name is Denzel Rodriguez. Personal finance, a wonderful day. God bless. You.